It's just another day for you. Oh wait, I've got more games. Mash Mikey Gaming. G'day gamers and welcome to another week of Mad Mikey's gaming collection of shit I'm never going to play. The, day of the weekly show where I bring to you the games that I've bought through the week as well as we'll go through this week's news and just a few stories here and there. So if you do, remember if you do like what I'm uh, putting out here don't forget to give us a big thumbs up, uh, subscribe, all the subscriptions in the world help. Also, uh, if you're not doing anything, check out below in the links. Uh, we've got my Facebook, my Twitter, my Instagram, my Snapchat, anything, all the social media. We are having a great time over at Facebook at the moment, uh, especially with Gamescom being around at the moment, where we're, we're just discussing, putting up links uh, to stuff that's exciting us and we're having some chats about it. But without further ado, after you've checked out all of those links, uh, we'll, we'll get into what's come out, what I bought this week. Uh, it was very slim pickings this week. Uh, actually been waiting because this week, next week, we've got the big Deus Ex human, well, mankind game. So um, really sort of don't have that much for the gaming this week, but I did manage to scan up a couple. Uh, first one I got uh, was an old Nintendo 64 game that I spent hours on back in the day it is WCW slash NWO Revenge. Now this game uh, back in the day when we had, I think it was Optus TV back then, um, I'd sit down, I'd watch the, the, the weekly WCW Nitro and I'd be so pumped that I'd just go on and be like, okay, this guy, I really liked what he did this week. So I'd actually go on and win whatever title I wanted them to win on it. So uh, just in case you're not 100% on what this game was, um, oh, who made it? Uh, THQ and Ukes. Now they made some the best wrestling games ever to come out. Um, not a word of a lie. Uh, uh, WrestleMania 2000 was really good. But WWF, and that was before they got the F out, uh, was actually the best wrestling game of all time. Just so simple, but yet so refined in terms of gameplay. Uh, but with this, um, you, you basically had a title to pick from. You go for the title, you, you have to win, I think it was about sort of 10 matches or so. And then you get a shot at the title and then you get to defend the title. You get to walk down with it. It was really good. It had heaps of wrestlers in there. It had so many stables. It was ridiculous back in the day. They even made up their own Akai Man, uh, which was really stupid. But Creator Wrestling was really good. Uh, very simple, but yet um, entertaining wrestling. Uh, also, uh, just moving on to the next generation. Uh, so we had NBA Street Home Court. Um, so those of you who don't know, I'm a bit of a basketball fan. Um, so did this was one of this was the success uh to after the nba street volume games so they had nba street then they had volume two and then they had volume three uh then they had a lot of really weird ones uh, like ballers and things like that sort of <laughs> it, it it was like the tv show i think basically like you want to get from your eggs to riches now this one was just a bit more of a return to uh form uh where the graphics were really good. Uh, this has a Metacritic score of 80. The reason I didn't give it a WCW one, because I didn't, but if you're interested, uh, it got an eight on IGN. But um, I do remember playing this, like I didn't get into it as much as like your streets and whatnot, but um, it's probably because it was a bit too hard. And next up, uh, Kingdoms Under Fire Circle of Doom. Now I've been actually been eyeing this game off for quite a while. I actually picked up, um, I don't actually have any more, but I do have, I did sort of have back in the day, the Kingdom Under Fires on the Xbox. Uh, this is an action RPG where I think there's a bit of tactics involved. This one has a Metacritic score of 55. Uh, so it didn't obviously get a very good write up from everywhere, but I think the high score that it had on there was somewhere around an 80. Um, but it's got six heroes, numerous worlds, um, this had, um, obviously Xbox Live compatibility. Um, yeah, I, I don't have any ill feelings towards these games. Um, I'm actually really thinking that I will play this game. Um, might be the boobies on the front, but, um, sort of a weakness, but hey, you know what, um, each their own look. 
don't ever let gaming scores dictate what you like. Um, it's one person's review. Um, obviously, Metacritic's out there for the fact that um, that's all the reviews put into one, and it's just an average. But one game, one man's trash is another man's treasure. You know what I'm talking about. And just the last game of the week, a uh, bit um, embarrassed that I don't actually. I've, I haven't had this one yet. I do have it on Steam though, I will say that. Uh, Spec Ops The Line. Now, very generic shooter. Um, very generic score, 76 on Metacritic. Um, but it's actual story in terms of um, the way it plays out. Don't want to put too many spoilers out there in case you haven't played it, but you play in Dubai, uh, where a sandstorm has basically consumed the area. Um, and your four guys going in and it just really questions it puts that question mark on sort of all your shooting games like How many how many people do you have to kill and it really puts a question in there and there's a really strong moment in there I won't spoil it for anyone um, But it really sort of makes you look at yourself Literally But that was it for this week um, now this week's been really Big and hectic. Um, Gamescom kicked off. Uh, there was a lot of great um, announcements. So first off, we had uh, the first. Well, well, I suppose it's not really the first, but because you've had the playable teaser. But uh, Resident Evil Seven gameplay. It looks scary as hell. Um, I've I've put it all on Facebook. Obviously, it's going to be all the YouTubes and whatnot. So if you are interested um, and want to check it out obviously uh check out the description below go over to facebook and we've got a whole discussion going there um it really looks like it is just going all balls out into first person uh so that's going to be interesting i don't know how i feel on that yet but um it's going to be something that look i think it, it looks it looks awesome and it looks scary as shit uh, also, there was a Metal Gear Solid, Metal Gear Solid announcement. Um, I think it's called Metal Gear Solid Survivor um, or something. I can't. Sorry, I really can't remember at the moment. But basically, it takes place in an alternate universe after the events of Metal Gear Solid Five: Ground Zeroes, where it's it's actually a four-player co-op game. Um, yeah, it's the first game, obviously, a Metal Gear Solid game that doesn't have Kojima attached to it and. It, it looks like it's got zombies and stuff like that, so it could be interesting, it could be mindless fun, but it's definitely not a Metal Gear Solid game uh, with uh, the big boss or Snake or Solid Snake or Liquid Snake or whoever, know what snake there is out there. Um, so yeah, there are a bit of the highlights that I've seen so far um, that really stood out to me at Gamescom. Um, I, there was also an announcement, um, or, or a chat, sorry, um, that where Microsoft, one of the big, big, bigs at Microsoft was actually saying that they, this may very well be once the, um, Scorpio comes out, the end to console generations as we know it. Um, and when he said that, I was like, wow, this is terrible. Like you guys are taking the Apple route, um, where you're bringing out iterative, um, consoles every four or five years. I mean, th there's a few pros and cons to that. Um, one hand, look, um, you buy an iPad every year. You, I don't think you'd buy a new console every year. Um, and if you're in, and if you think about it, an iPad, an iPhone, they all cost over about a thousand dollars a year. If you're one of those early adopter people, whereas a console, if they keep it around the sort of five six hundred dollar mark every five six years. And you can play everything backwards compatible is going to be moving forward. That sounds like a PC. So obviously the PC guys are going to be, well, we've got this, blah, blah, blah. Um, but console is really my choice. So um, I I was very umming and ahhing about it. But then actually somebody put it that way. I think it was somebody over on IGN that if, if I can play all my games and don't have to worry if backwards compatible backwards compatibility is an issue, then this could be something good if they do it right. Um, so that's my feelings on it at this moment. Um, so if they do it right, yeah, absolutely. This could be something good. I don't have to worry about my old Xbox being backwards compatible or waiting for Xbox or PlayStation to re-release things and whatnot. Um, also speaking about re-releases, um, 
there's been word on a Korean store that they're bringing out like an Ezio remake of the Assassin's Creed game. So two Brotherhood um, and Revelations. Um, I'm not sure how I feel about that. It's a bit of a money grab by the sounds of it. Um, they've already got one of them backwards compatible. Just bring them out backwards compatible, guys. Um, that's pretty ridiculous. Um, and but on the other, on the flip side, um, EA have actually changed their stance on uh, sort of re-releasing games, and there's uh, some serious talks with those guys about bringing a remake of the Mass Effect trilogy. Um, again, back, Mass Effect is backwards compatible at the moment on the Xbox. Uh, but 2 and 3, I think they're having trouble with because they're multi-discs. Uh, they'll never be on the store. So, I, from what I've heard, they have found a workaround. But, obviously Mass Effect's not out yet. I don't know whether they're holding on to it uh, for when Andromeda comes out. But, that's where they stand. They're, they've changed their stance, basically. And, just on to the last bit of the, the show. Um, what I've been playing this week. So this week I've been playing a few things. I'm going to try out a couple of things. Um, obviously I've been playing No Man's Sky. I know I was on shit I'm never going to play, but obviously this is a great game. Um, my initial thoughts on this game, um, and I did sort of do a wave on Anchor, uh, probably about sort of three to four weeks ago. Uh, and my quote was basically, I think this game will sell really well for the first couple of weeks. Um, and it is the second best selling or fastest selling game on PlayStation 4 in the UK at the moment. So there's that. But I don't think it's going to be critically acclaimed. Now, that is sounding like it's true as well. Um, it's scoring about a sort of between anywhere between sort of 50 to 80 on the gaming websites. Um, I don't really think there's that much to it. Now, I've got friends saying to me, oh, there's the lore and whatnot in the game. I don't. I just really go from planet to planet, get the resources that I need and piss off, basically. Um, other people have obviously got the intention of reading into it a bit more, which is good for them. But for the casual gamer who's going to actually sit down and play it for sort of the first hour or so, and they're going to be like, fuck this, this is crap. And when I was at EB Games picking up the, the three games that I got this week, uh, the guy um, before me was actually buying it, and the guy at EB Games said, are you sure? He's like, why do you say that? He goes, we've had a lot of returns on this game. So, looks like it's sold and people, and it's obviously not what everybody wanted. But, it's a game that I'm in. I, I don't love the game, but I'm still wanting to come home and play it. So, I think it's like a grind, like a collect-a-thon, like uh, your Diablo games and whatnot. So, that's my feelings on that. Also, uh, this week I have been playing Metal Gear Solid Five. Um, I really got back into it, I finally got it working um, after I'd been trying to get it to work for so long, it just would not start up. Um, really enjoying it, um, having a bit of fun with it again, um, because I've already played probably about, I think I got up to about 40% the last time I was playing it. Um, these first few missions are a bit of a chore getting back into it and whatnot and only relying on um, the D-horse and whatnot. Um, found a dog, so obviously he's going to grow up eventually, but um, it's a good game. Um, I might sort of play it a bit tonight. Um, I'm not sure. I'm thinking of maybe hitting a horror game because I am home alone tonight. Um, and also this week uh, I've been playing uh, WWE 2K16. Now this was free with Games with Gold uh, for, this, uh, for the next month. Um, I already do own it on disc, uh, but it's but when the games are gold, I just down. I'd say okay, download it so I don't have to worry about a disc. Um, but I'm actually stuck at the Bret Hart and uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin match at WrestleMania 13, which is being a bitch. It's a submission match, and I don't know if uh, any of you guys have been playing uh, WWE 2K16 in the submission matches, but I don't really get the submission. It's a little circle uh, going around and whatnot, and you have to basically hide from their circle. And you push left and right, and I don't know which way it's going. It, it's just really annoying. And um, any of you guys have played through these sort of um, the story-based missions in the game, um, you have to do a certain amount of things to get there. And I, re I always get to the one bit 
and then he pulls out some crap like a cobra clutch submission move um and i stuff up and i tap out and then i'm just like you know what stuff this i'm not playing anymore but that's about it for this week guys um let, let us know in the comments what you think um, as i said check out uh all the social media below uh looking to probably do an unboxing of deus ex when it comes out this week because uh, I did get the collector's edition, uh, so I, I missed out on the first ASX Human Revolution game uh, collector's edition, so I'm not missing out on this one. So I'll be picking that up and probably playing it. Uh, I'll, I'll probably look to do a live stream when I start playing it, um, so check it out for that. Uh, I'll probably be playing tonight. I'm uh, going to try a streaming thing called maybe uh, Mad Mikey Drinking Buddies. Uh, so check out the Twitch below and um, we'll, we'll have a look. But guys, thank you so much. Uh, again, your support is amazing and have yourselves a great gaming week. Bye guys.